this week's art studio chat. My name is Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to my studio. Now, in this episode, I want to talk to you about how to loosen up your painting and be more bold and expressive and freer in your approach to painting. This is a, sum, a subject that I think is pretty important for a lot of people who follow me at the Learn to Paint Academy and through our YouTube channel and Facebook, um, which you know predominantly are uh, beginner to intermediate hobby artists and some of them wanting to go on and, and start selling their art. And what I've noticed is a lot of us are very particular about details and very pedantic about wanting to get every little thing right, uh, whatever that means, right? Uh, and over analyze and over worry about our work. And so I often get asked the question, how do I loosen up my painting? How do I become looser and freer so that I'm not agonizing over every little detail in a painting, right? Now, if you like detail painting, then don't watch this video because there's, I'm not saying there's something wrong with detail painting. It's perfectly fine. There's a lot of great artists who are highly detailed and hyper-realism, awesome stuff. Go do that, right? This is only for those people who want to escape the need to have to put so much detail in there that they become very uh, pedantic and frustrated and uptight about their painting and they want to get looser. So this is a journey that I've been on as well. You know, I, I used to paint or try and paint tighter than what I do now. And in recent times, I've really freed myself up and, and just had a lot more fun with my painting. So if you have a look at this painting here, this is a, a one from a few months ago. And this is the Mary River in Kennelsworth. And it's very loose and almost semi-abstract in many ways compared to what I used to try and paint. And I loved painting it. You know, I had a lot more fun painting this and I want to share with you some of the tips um, that I found helpful in moving away from trying to paint you know realistic sort of representations to painting more of a semi-realism semi-abstract but definitely a lot looser and more expressive style of painting so the number one tip is really about attitude you know if you approach each painting as though you're going to you know, you're there to paint a masterpiece and if you take it really seriously and, and you think that you have to have it perfect and that you want to get every detail right, then you, you sort of have this mental handbrake on ever being able to paint loosely. You know, there's a lot of things in here that some people who are very uptight about their painting would consider to be mistakes or issues. Like there's a big drip here. Um, because I was using water mixable oils and I had too much water in it and it just dripped. And my first reaction was, I need to fix that, right? And then I thought to myself, you know what? No, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, and just incorporate it into the painting. So it was a shift in attitude for me. And, and I think you have to question yourself as to, if you are painting very tight and you want everything to be perfect right now, you have to ask yourself the question, why? I mean, are you trying to paint a masterpiece of every painting? And what I did was I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not gonna try and paint a finished painting. I am gonna go out and have fun and just paint in a way that makes me feel good, right? Rather than trying to paint something that, you know, is gonna get approval by others or whatever your thought process might be. And, and as a result of that, I made mistakes. Like I splashed a bit of paint on the painting at one stage because I was working really fast. I thought, well, I don't actually don't mind that little bit of splash. So then I got some more paint and I flicked it on and you know, just experimentation. Now, you, if your mindset is such that you have to have it perfect and you have to have every detail in, uh, then you, you won't explore and, and enjoy that freedom of expression. So you've got to really question yourself, why do you think it has to be perfect and highly detailed? Just let that go and take the attitude, I'm here to have a bit of fun and um, I'm gonna splash some paint around and see what happens, right? And automatically with that fresher outlook, then you will get looser as a result of just exploring, experimenting, and, and having fun with it. The number two thing that I did to loosen up my painting was to start painting on a bigger canvas. Now this is a 20 inch by 28. I know for some artists that's a small uh, canvas, but for me that was a bigger one because I was painting little eight by tens and so on. And what I found was the smaller the size of the surface that you're painting on, the more careful you are. <laughs> so when I got to a bigger canvas, because there's more blank canvas to cover, I automatically just started becoming less particular about how I covered that canvas in the first pass, right? The first layer um, blocking in. And so by having more room to work, 
I felt myself becoming more open and freer than on a smaller canvas. So give that a try. Just go out and get a big canvas and um, try painting something bigger than what you normally do because then you've got more space. Uh, you're not confined by a small little canvas or service. And I found that it really freed me up to just let loose with color and, and having fun with it. So give that a try. Okay, the number three way that I loosened up my painting and got more bold and expressive was big brushes, right? Um, people who paint particular, detailed, and trying to get it perfect, they tend to use little tiny brushes. And, uh, and I've been there, I've got lots of little tiny brushes around here somewhere, but now, big brushes. So if I'm gonna start tackling a bigger canvas, I'm gonna go to a big brush. Now what a big brush means is that you, get, you can load it up with more paint and you can you know, do more expressive brush marks and um, get more paint down quickly. So if you have a look in here, I've got these you know, big marks where I've just gone you know, straight down, bang. And um, just really uh, not thinking through the brush marks too much. So a big brush, I'll mix up a lot of color and just attack the canvas really. And, um, but do it with a spirit of joy and fun and you'll find that you'll make lots of little happy accidents and things in there. Um, you know, just trying to find an example of a happy accident. Like here, for instance, I had this green here and I put that green down there and then I sort of went down to the palette, picked up a little bit of yellow and made a mark there. And just the way, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the, the blending of the two, you know, the, it was mixed on the canvas. I didn't stop and think about that. That's just a happy accident, right? Most of what happened on the painting is pretty much a happy accident because there was no... Uh, stopping and thinking about each step. I wasn't over analyzing it. I was just loading the brush up with, intuitively with the next color and, um, and just making marks on the canvas, right? So try painting with a big brush and not thinking too much about what you're doing and, and really just free yourself up to just put paint down, right? Now, the number four thing that I did to really loosen up and, and be more expressive and bold was I changed the way I make marks on the canvas as well. So I started introducing palette knives and paint scrapers, right? Big palette knives. And um, you can see the effect of those in here where I've scratched in branches and things like that. And also with, you know, paint scrapers, there's spots in here where I've gone like that. And, and you know, really tried to make marks in the painting utilizing different tools, okay? Rather than just a brush. And by doing that, that sort of frees up your uh, your style as well. You become a lot looser in doing that. And then the other thing I did was I took my brush and using the, the end of the brush, um, used that to make marks in here. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, it almost looks like scribble, but in the context of the overall painting, it works well. And there's times where I've used my thumbnail and things like that. Don't recommend that if you're using traditional oils, but with water mixable oils or acrylic, that can work well. Um, the only thing is if you're using acrylics, you gotta do this fast because these aren't good with dried or semi-dry acrylic paint. But, you know, try different tools. Now I've seen some abstract artists who've gone out in the garden and they've brought in sticks and leaves, dried up leaves, and they've used that to make marks. And I'm gonna try that out soon. Um, but yeah, different tools, different ways of making marks and, and adding that into the mix of what you're already doing. Now, the number five thing that I think is important when you're trying to paint loose, you still want it to represent the subject. You know, even though this is getting more on the semi-abstract side, it's still a subject that people look at this and they go, okay, there's a mountain range and there's fields and trees and a, and a river. And when I share the story, it's Kenilworth and you know, um, these are the sandy embankments, um, you know, when it hasn't been raining for a while. Uh, people get it, right? So there's still enough information there to represent the subject, especially when you add the right title and a bit of a description. Um, so what's important, therefore, even though we're going to paint loose and we're going to paint bold and be more expressive, you still need fundamentals. So design is important. Notice I've got the horizon line, you know, above the halfway mark. It's not sitting on the halfway mark. Notice I've used color temperature. So the mountain range is blue. And um, then we've got warmer tones in the foreground. So I'm utilizing all the things that we know are important to creating a, um, you know, a good 
painting. But what's important though, is that there's no details, they're all big shapes. So if you have a look at this little cluster of trees here, uh, there's, there's no tree trunks and branches and leaves. It's just I've put in, uh, I've utilized a dark tone, a mid range and a highlight. So there's a dark in here, okay? Then there's a mid tone green and then there's a highlight on top of that. So the same principles of creating form uh, apply, you know, utilizing values, a dark and mid tone and a highlight to be able to capture a sense of three dimensionality, a sense of realism. Same principles there. But in reality, when I'm painting it, I'm not paying you know, much attention. I'm using old scraggly brushes. Well, I shouldn't say much attention, but intuitively I'm doing it, right? Old scraggly brushes, I'll mix up a dark and I'm putting a mark. And then I put the mid tone in and then the highlight is just a little clip of paint, right? Now, anyone looking at the painting is gonna know that that's a tree. Even though there's no leaves, there's no branches, right? There's, there's very little tree information there that you might put in if you're painting really detailed. So it's just about the right shape, the right values, the right location in the, in the overall design, uh, and the right temperature. So utilizing fundamental principles, but just loosening right up you can still create paintings that are going to work. They've got the right um, elements in there to make them work. So there you go, folks. That's five keys to loosening up, becoming bolder and more expressive in your painting. Number one was your attitude and how you approach it. Um, I think you need to approach it with a spirit of fun and let's just play and, and let's not worry about the outcome. And that, let's not see what we might've seen once as mistakes, as mistakes, but happy accidents. Uh, so attitude's important. Number two is Try a bigger canvas. It'll give you more freedom, more room to move, and uh, and you'll want to get paint down a little bit quicker. Okay, so the other thing I didn't mention was paint a bit quicker and use your intuition. Don't overthink it. Get out of your head and get into your heart and soul, and um, and utilize your in or, or tap into your intuition as to what to do next, rather than your thought process. Next one was bigger brushes, right? Bigger brushes and bigger marks. So you know, if you have a look at the sky here, I've got these big marks of color. Okay rather than finicky little detail marks, like small brush marks. We want big, bold brush marks. Number four was to utilize different tools for mark making. And we talked about everything from utilizing my thumb, the back of the brush, to uh, palette knives and paint scrapers, um, you know, and things out of the garden even. So experiment. And, and I think that spirit of experimentation will help you break through where you're currently at with your painting to a whole new level. And then number five was I brought you back to the idea of you've still got to have the fundamentals right, the right design, the right composition, use of values, understanding uh, color temperature, all those sort of things we, we consider to be fundamental to good landscape or seascape painting still need to be there for it to work. Um, but if you utilize everything else we talked about over the top of those fundamentals, then you can create nice, loose, bold, expressive painting. And I have to tell you, I've really been enjoying my painting since I've started painting in this way. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed your visit to my studio this week and that you've got some good ideas on how to be looser, bolder, and more expressive. We're about to launch a brand new course at the Learn to Paint Academy, which is all about looser, bolder, and more expressive painting um, with demos and we'll go into those tools and things in a lot more detail. Um, we'll have you know two or three full-length demos. So if that's of interest to you, make sure you register for, at least for the free course at the Learn to Paint Academy. And from there, you can find out about the different courses that we have. Hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please like, comment, share, um, and ask questions, you know, and, and subscribe to our channel and our Facebook. We'd love to see you there. And I look forward to next week with more Art Studio Chat. Cheers.